I'm Corbett Wall with DV Auction here with your feeder flash for Monday, May the 17th, brought to you in part by Joplin Regional Stockyards. Uh, another lighter run kind of expected here on Monday for the regular feeder cattle auction, about 4,500 head. Should be getting underway about 8 o'clock in the morning and they'll get done in good time there. Remember, you can watch all of Joplin Regional Stockyards auctions on dvauction.com. And that includes their regular feeder cattle auction, their, their Thursday specials, uh, their, their Wednesday cow and bull sales, the special cow and bull sales, and also your primetime livestock videos on dvauction.com. Drought busters. I tell you what, we had some impressive rains uh, over the weekend in places that we don't normally get those. and and. Uh, places that have kind of been in drought for a long time but uh, may not be impressive to you guys that live out on the eastern side of the United States but uh, if you live in West Texas or Western Kansas Eastern Colorado uh, you got some sizable rains and uh, and flooding in some cases but uh, you know we'll take as much as we can get we've never had too much rain in West Texas that's for sure but uh, also rains are working up into western Nebraska and, uh, and even getting up into the, to the uh, southwestern corner there of, of South Dakota a little bit. Now, you get on north of there, up North Dakota and, and uh, eastern Montana and places like that, really dry still, and they haven't uh, been able to catch those rains. But I tell you what, that, uh, to get three, four inches of rain, you know, at one time, in places like uh, Amarillo, Texas, or, or Clovis and Portales, New Mexico, or you know, out in west western Kansas, uh, you know, uh, on John Campbell there in Lahana, Colorado, getting big rains. You know, I, you just take them anytime you can get them, and we normally don't uh, get those big rains. Uh, our rainy season is actually later in the summer, uh, but uh, we're we're blessed with uh, some spring rains this time, and and really going to enjoy that and. Uh, Tell you what, it'll be so green in that country uh, this week, middle of the week, uh, it'll hurt your eyes to look at it. But all week we've been talking about, uh, past week, we talked about the meeting of truce uh, that went on uh, a week ago here. Today on uh, last Monday uh, was a, a big meeting uh, between the, the member leaders, not the staff, but the member leaders of NCBA, U.S. Cattlemen's Associations, uh, RCAF, a National Farmers Union, uh, Farm Bureau Federation, and uh, Livestock Marketing Association. So uh, they, they each got to bring four to the meeting. Uh, they didn't get to sit next to their buddies and kind of gang up. Uh, everybody worked uh, uh, kind of uh, solo there and when it come time for them to talk. And everybody I talked to that was at the meeting was very encouraged about it. They did come up with some things that they could all agree on. They, they said that they agreed on a whole lot more than they disagreed on and actually didn't have a lot of disagreements. They all agreed that it's time to get something done. And so they, they kind of got together and they, they come up with uh, several strategies of uh, things that they want to get done. Now, after Monday, they took those back uh, to headquarters there. And that's where you run into the problem with uh, some of the staff of, of certain uh, associations there uh you know they've they've kind of kind of made promises uh you know you hate to say it but your your, your cattlemen's organizations uh some of them have made promises to the packers and have heavy packer influence uh you know that's kind of like the fox in the hen house but uh you know they went back to compare the things that they came up uh with as a unison as a group and going to compare that against policy and just make sure that they don't have anything uh, that they can't do. And then we're expecting here, maybe on Monday or may, may take until Tuesday, to get a, a unified statement, kind of a press release that says what they're wanting to get done. And we're hoping that we see uh, and we're expecting this group to get together again and follow through on some of these things. And, and that would be great. Uh, I tell you what, uh, that, that would kind of put a shock into these Packers a little bit if they saw your major cattlemen's groups getting together on anything. And we've heard time and time again, and I've heard from the offices even, uh, some of our, uh, our uh, U.S. Senators in, in major ag states, major cattle states, saying, uh, you know, just tell us what you want us to do and we'll do it. But, but we can't have conflicting uh, 
uh, requests from, from different organizations uh, within the cattle industry asking us to do different things. We, we can get done about whatever you want to get done if you guys will get together. And so we're really looking forward to this uh, statement that's going to come out early this week. I'll be, uh, be giving it to you as soon as I get my hands on it and any other information I can get on this. This is so pertinent to our situation this week. And if you notice this week, uh, on Thursday, this past week, we had one of the most frustrating days that, that we've ever had. We saw... Uh, your your live cattle futures go down three dollars and and you know and even more than that on some of your out fronts and and there was no reason for it at all it was just a, a big massive fund dump and uh, you know they had been kind of building up uh, your your ag commodities as they were betting on inflation and and they had been backing off of your stock markets but uh, they they flip flopped on Thursday and man it it it. Uh, threw us by surprise and we didn't see that coming and it just shows how vulnerable uh, your ag, ag commodities are. I've always said that and the guys that really know it will will confirm that uh, some of those big funds, they've got so much investment money, uh, they could throw a dartboard at, at a number sheet and they could take those ag commodities to whatever number that they land on. They, they can drive it uh, and, and you know, you guys know it too if you know what I'm talking about. They they can they can just push that up and down. They like to get in, roll it up and ride, and then they like to get in and roll it down and ride too, because it just uh, you know they they can pretty much uh, uh, maneuver those ag commodities because they're very shallow compared to your big money markets and stock markets that they invest in. But uh, we saw this week uh, as we go further into this new administration of, of Mr. Magoo's. We see that the, the weak leadership that is so evident to everybody across the world, uh, and it, it's starting to bring about more and more problems all the time. This week we saw a cyber attack on a major uh, gas pipeline that feeds uh, the eastern uh, coast there and, and the southeastern United States. And uh, supposedly it was a hacker that uh, out of Russia that did that well nobody does anything in Russia without the the government's blessing and so we knew they were in on it too but uh, you know and and then they the, our government allowed um, Colonial which had no choice really to pay the ransom to get the get the gas flowing again so they could uh, fill up uh, those gas stations get people moving again Trump would have never, never allowed that. He, he, he was not a ransom payer. Uh, but, but they would have never tried that under his administration because he, uh, he had uh, a leadership and a strong leadership uh, as opposed to the weak leadership I have now. We wouldn't have these massive droves of people coming up to our southern border and walking across. Uh, he didn't have that when he was in there because uh, the word was spread all over the, the countries, even down into Central America. Don't try to get across because they'll just send you right back. So you have to have strong leadership. And unfortunately, we've got a long road to hoe here. And uh, I, I just, uh, if, if it can consistently gets progressively worse the way it has the first 100 and 120 days or so, we are really up again it, guys. But let's look at your board, uh, cattle board for last week. June live cattle Monday was up 220, Tuesday was up 40 cents, Wednesday down just two cents, and then Thursday was that frustrating day, down three dollars on June live cattle. Friday was down 30 cents, with June ending the week at 115.30, down 72 cents for the week. But it wasn't a complete uh, washout on on your live cattle. It, it, we just get frustrated when we have no. Uh, you know, no drive ourselves. We can't control the market ourselves, and, and the people that are that are involved in the industry really have no say in what your market is, uh, especially on your fat cattle end. As we saw, our box beef cutout values continue to soar uh, with, with none of that money trickling down to your cattle producers. But August live cattle futures ended the week at 118.82, down three cents. Now feeder cattle. Uh, we're a little more friendly because uh, we saw the grains back off uh, big time this week because we had that supply and demand report come out on on uh, Wednesday and we saw that they, they added fairly significantly to your ending stocks on corn 
Uh, they, they uh, of course, of course, both corn and beans added acres. Uh, we had a, a slight improvement in, in the expected yield. So uh, yes, that's gonna that's gonna help our, our our feeder cattle, and it sure enough did pretty decent gains on our feeder cattle board. Look at May feeder cattle. Monday was up 372. Tuesday down just 12 cents. Wednesday was the day the report come out up 142. We didn't get to enjoy uh, uh, the the real springboard that we thought we would on Thursday. Uh, it was still up 70 cents on your May contract, but uh, could have been up a lot more than that had we not seen the upheaval in your uh, drop on the, all your commodity markets. But Friday was up 10 cents with May feeder cattle ending the week at 137.55 up 583 for the week august ended the week up 688 at 151.15 so uh that's a little bit encouraging but our fat cattle trade was not very encouraging uh, we had a light uh, sales this past week 56,800 head through thursday and then very very minimal trade on friday but uh up through thursday we saw live sales of steers and heifers from 116.5 to 121, mostly 119 to 120. And these are charity bids. Uh, the Packers wouldn't have to give that much. They're, they're trying to get uh, some of the blowback off of them a little bit by kind of holding the market in there fairly steady. And, and your live and dressed bids both were, were uh, unevenly steady through the week. And, and we actually gained some ground on our weighted averages. So. You know, it wasn't terrible, but there again, we just have no say in what goes on. Uh, the simple rules of supply and demand uh, do not work for your cattle business right now because we are, are under mon monopolistic control uh, with your packers, and, and they're so disciplined, they don't have to get aggressive. They know they're going to get all the cattle eventually anyway. But weighted average up through Thursday on live steers was 119.70, and that was a little bit better. Dress sales steers and heifers up through Thursday of last week, 187.50 to 192.50. Uh, your your dressed uh, or your dressed weighted average steers uh, were 190.48, and both of those weighted averages are one to two dollars higher than what we saw last week. The bulk, so not too bad really. Friday we didn't see a whole lot of trade. We saw a few hundred head sell in Iowa, about 18,400 head for the week, which sounds like a lot, but that's a lot lighter than what we've been trading in Iowa uh, for the last several months here, you know, and they trade about 50% of theirs negotiated cash. We usually see more than that, but saw just a few hundred sales there on Friday. Uh, live sales 120, dress sales 191. Nebraska had a, had a few hundred cattle there, about 1,200. 23,100 head for Nebraska, so uh, not terrible there. And, and we saw them kind of come back and trade at a bit of a premium because that's where we're sh uh, the shortest of market ready cattle. Live sales 119 to 122, dress sales 192 on Friday, and that was towards the top of the market. Didn't have any sales in Kansas or Texas confirmed on Friday, and both of those uh, movements in Kansas and Texas would be light enough to hit yet more triggers on NCBA 75% of a robust market uh, plan there. So, uh, you know, maybe if, if hopefully they're behind uh, what, what was put together with the meeting of truce and they won't resist it, uh, but you know, they're, they're done for. If they're going to do what they said they were going to do, uh, by the end of this second quarter, they will be getting behind some type of a a uh, mandatory fix or a regulatory fix to get more cash trade going. Did have a few hundred sales there in, in Colorado and only 1,100 head confirmed in Colorado uh, negotiated for the week. Uh, but that's uh, all those sales late in the week were at 120. Box beef cutout values. This is what is so frustrating. Your Packers have enjoyed these, these huge, almost gouging level uh, prices for their product, yet they're not, not having to give uh, hardly any more for the cattle. And, and uh, a lot of that has to do with the, the way they handle things, the, their, their, the discipline that they use uh, in managing uh, you know, the supplies of the cattle that they know they're going to get eventually anyway. But some of it has to do with uh, you know, running those plants as efficiently and as up to speed as they'd like to because we're giving so much free money away with the weak leadership that we have under Mr. Magoo 
it's a lot easier for those guys to sit at home and draw that unemployment aid, uh, which a lot of the states are resisting now and not taking because uh, you know nobody wants to work. We've got help wanted signs everywhere and nobody wants to go to work, including uh, your frontline uh, people in your processing plant. So that's frustrating when you can't get people to come to work. And I told you guys this week that I'd heard uh, where, you know, they, they show up whether they want to or not, you know, if, if or, or I should say they might show up and they might not. So uh, if, if, uh, if they do show up, great. If, uh, if they don't show up, Whenever they do sh decide to show up, they still get a job. They don't. They don't get a pink slip anymore. Uh, they're just glad to have a, a somebody to put on the line. If whoever decides to show up, they, they're given signing bonuses. They're raising their their hourly wage, and uh, of course, we're seeing that in all lines of work, uh, especially your fast food industry, just trying to get somebody to work. But uh, you look at your your uh, weighted average price on all of last week's sales. On choice cuts, three fourteen oh six up ten dollars and fifty five cents a hundred for the week compared to your weighted average from a week ago. That is huge. Uh, your your late week uh, quote uh, at the end Friday afternoon was even higher than that at three sixteen ninety four. So about three dollars and seventeen cents a pound for box beef cutout values dressed, and your cattle are bringing uh, like a uh, dollar ninety one. Seems uh, like a lot in there to, to just cut that product up, right? Uh, how about select cuts? Uh, we did see them start to hit a, a ceiling a little bit uh, this past week, but your weighted average on select cuts, 295.27 this past week, that was up 857. End of the week quote uh, on Friday afternoon for select, 293.19, so off of that a little bit. I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, your choice quoted a little bit lower this week as we've gotten through Mother's Day and likely most of your orders have already been placed for Memorial Day grilling type product and then we'll just have Father's Day. So we're, we're seasonally getting to the point where they should start leveling off a little bit. Uh, we had 488 loads of cuts. That's the second week in a row failed to even reach uh, 500 loads of cuts, grinds and trimmings on your box beef, but they're not really concerned if they're not moving a lot of product. They can keep those price levels up there. How about your feeder cattle markets? Real-time index on DV auction ended the week at 133.36. That was up $4.11, similar to what your board was, not quite as much, but cash markets didn't respond quite as fast, but cash feeders and your auctions across the United States firm to five dollars higher. Some renewed interest in in uh, calves and uh, stalker weight cattle. We don't have many of those hard stalkers left, but uh, wean calves especially good demand for those. And part of that is because we started to see some moisture and forecast for moisture there late in the week, and and people buying some of those uh, those turnout calves uh, more readily than they were uh, the week or so before. But uh, a couple of individual quotes to end the week, late in the week, that I want to give out. How about South Coffeeville Stockyards in South Coffeeville, Oklahoma? Uh, they had a, a big, long string of cattle, three colored kind of cattle, if you know what I'm talking about. 116 head, 900 pound steers bring 127. Pretty decent kind of quote there on a long string. But the best quote that I saw anywhere late in the week was out of Mankato, Kansas. So, Mankato, Kansas, Neil Beret and company there. And your Zach Tran top quote for the day, 58 head, 847 pound steers, bring 135.75. And that's your feeder flash for Monday.